How you doing, everybody? You having a good night? Okay. So I've been working with telecom companies for the last few years to try and improve their online sales. And the biggest challenge I've had all this time is just how much choice these guys offer. So when I initially started working with them, I said, guys, there's too much choice here. There's just too many products. You've got to read this book by Barry Schwartz, The Paradox of Choice. I'm sure loads of you are familiar with it, but for those who aren't, let me just give you a high level. What Barry says is that if you ask anyone if choice is a good thing, you invariably get a positive response. Choice is all these ideas of freedom, of control, and autonomy wrapped up in them, and everybody wants that. But the reality of choice is actually something different. We're bombarded with it constantly. If I go down to my local Tesco store and I try and buy some butter, there's probably 50 or 60 different types of butter there. And with that much choice, I can't choose. I can't make a decision. With that much choice, people actually walk away and they don't buy. And so this is the paradox of the book. People say they want choice, they say choice is great, and yet, in reality, their behavior says something else. And like, the research proves it too. The less choice you offer, the more you sell. And this just feels like such irrelevant learning for telephone companies. This is a picture I took in the UK of a store that was full of phones. It was so full of phones, there was different ones for fashionistas versus style addicts. What's the difference between them? <laughs> so you get the idea. There's just too much choice there. So in response to that, we built a page like this. From the home page, click on phones. You see the four most popular phones with big buy now buttons. We're reducing choice. I'm feeling smug. The sales are going to come in. And yet, in reality, this page utterly fails. All people care about in this page is this all phones button down at the bottom. They're going to buy one of these phones later because they are the most four most popular phones. But at this point, they won't make that decision. And so we spend ages trying to figure out why this page failed. And the reasons it's failed is fundamentally due to trust. No one actually trusts the company <laughs> to show them the four most popular phones. So that page back there just makes them feel limited and controlled. And so while people might struggle with too much choice, if they feel that choice is being artificially controlled, they're not interested. And this trust thing actually isn't just for telecom companies. It's pretty much for all big business. I tried to think of a big Irish company when I was coming here that after I would say, I trust you so much, you make the decision for me. And I couldn't think of any. Now, I'm going to do a little example from small business this time. This guy is Colin Harmon. He is two-time Irish Barista champion, two-time fourth in the world Barista championships, and owner of three FE coffee shops. I'm sure you all go there. But when you go into Colin's shop, what you see actually is quite a limited menu. You only get three options here. And yet this time, the limitation in choice doesn't feel bad. It actually feels like a good thing. This menu feels curated, particularly for you. And so it like brings up all these things because of the trust that you have in Colin and his reputation. You're happy to go with that. And so this brings up the ideas of trust and control and the relationship between them. We've seen from the examples that when you have low trust, trying to reduce choice just doesn't work. And that's the position that a lot of our businesses are in. A lot of big businesses just can't reduce trust. They can't reduce choice because they have low trust. Trying to increase trust would be such a massive effort. So what do they do? They cede choice to the customer, allow them to control. And what you get here is this real, 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 real sort of catch-22. We know that more choice reduces sales. But for big business, a lot of time, that's all they can do. And for us as designers, we've got to live with it. Too, there's a lot of choice there. We've got to deal with it. Now, in the real world, for big companies like this, you walk into one of their stores, and you see a human being. They can understand what you're asking for. They can reduce to a choice to a level where you can actually make a decision. But for online, we don't have that human contact. So here's three real quick learnings for what we found for lots of choice. One, get people to the product listing page. That's where they feel comfortable. That's where they'll buy from. Two, the filtering this page is really important. That's the way they're going to narrow the choice to make a decision. And three, try and be as open and honest as your designs as possible. This is a design that we did all about recommending products. But the beauty of it is that it sits in the product listing page. So when you get a recommendation, you can compare it against all the others. But to be honest, I think online's got a hell of a lot of work to do. If online was a sales guy, I think he'd look like one of these dudes here. <laughs> online's got to do way more at helping the customer to manage this level of trust. And, trust isn't, and choice isn't going anywhere. We got to live with it. So this is the challenge, and the challenge I put to all designers here. We got to find better ways to manage this level of trust, to find designs that work well in regards to being more elegant, more clever, and more trustworthy. Thank you very much, everybody.